Probably my favorite show of all time has to be Hawaii Five-O. Now, I never knew why HPD is the Honolulu Police Department. Do you know why they called the state police Hawaii Five-O? 50th state. Isn't that stupid? I mean, what's the point? Freeze, New Jersey, three! What? <laughs> Steve McGarrett, this guy was so cool, he'd sit in his office, drink coffee, put Vaseline in his hair, <laughs> and then order Dano his chin around, right? <laughs> Get me a coffee, cream, no sugar, and a Danish, do my laundry, right, Steve? <laughs> because they got to be in the credits. That was their big payoff, right? Every week, Dano would stick his mug in a broken glass. It would say, James MacArthur. And this bothered me every week. Cam Fong as Chin Ho. I said, what's the difference here? <laughs> Clearly, that is a racist joke. It occurred to me after living in San Francisco a couple of years, there's a lot of Asian people watching this show. They're all sitting at home. Jack Lord as Steve McGarrett, what's the difference? Eh? The same thing. Sword cuts both ways. Now, one guy was ripped off, never got to be in the credits. Shay in the lab. Remember this guy? A little white coat, the scene of every crime. He dusts for prints and then he finds a puka shell. <laughs> he takes the shell back to the lab and God only knows what was in this lab. He'd come up with phenomenal deductions about who committed the crime. Did you get anything for me, Che? Yeah, Steve, I was able to isolate a small molecular strand of polyester from the puka shell. From that I can conclude the man was in his late 30s. <laughs> And from Wisconsin. That's great work, Jay. Wisconsin's the 39th state, Steve, ratified. And okay, fine, fine, fine. Chin, get me a list of all the people who left Wisconsin since 1949. Get on that right away. Right, Steve. And he turns and runs out of the office. Where does he go? That's all I really want to know. The Maui Archives, he's looking at microfilm somewhere. You got anything else, Jay? Yeah, Steve, from the tire tracks I lifted, I could tell he was driving a late model Pontiac. <laughs> Good work, Jay. We'll, we'll see about getting your name in those titles. Dano! <laughs> I want you to hit all the gas stations on the island. Get me a list of all the people who bought gas in the last 10 years. Get on that right away. <laughs> right, Steve. There goes Dano off to all the AM, PM, mini marts in Hawaii with a big clipboard. <laughs> They get all this information, they list it on a blackboard. Einstein couldn't put this crime together. Steve paces a couple of times, and he gets a hunch. Wait a minute, Dano, wait a minute. He didn't like his mother. His moon is in Pluto. He's gonna wanna hit the museum. Let's get over there right away. I'm going, wait a minute, let's go over this one more time. They all run to the museum, and there is the guy with the glass cutter in one hand, the Mahula Hula diamonds in the other, picture of his mom, a line through it, everything fits. <laughs> Ninety cops run in, they all point guns at him, and the show's over. Almost. But you can't change channels, and you can't turn it off until you hear that one line. Like a junkie waiting for a fix, you all go, say it to him, pal! You say it every show, go ahead! You all know it, ready? One, two... Three. Does that frighten you at all? More people know Bookham Dano than voted in 1984. Johnny can't read, but he knows Bookham Dano and the words to the Flintstones. Down in a canyon, trapped under a log, runs back to warn someone. <laughs> What is it, girl? Somebody in trouble? Who is it? <laughs> Phil? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> there? <laughs> Barry. Um, Barry uh, Johnson? <laughs> um, Barry White? <laughs> That's right, I don't know Barry White. Um, Barry uh, the Forest Ranger? <laughs> Barry the Forest Ranger. He and his wife are fighting again. <laughs> He's trapped under a log <laughs> with Diane Cannon. <laughs> no, Diane in a canyon. All righty. Um, <laughs> so close. Okay. Uh, I'll get a ladder. <laughs> or an aluminum ladder. And, uh, 
I'll get a rope, too. A rope would be good, huh? <laughs> all right, a three-quarter inch nylon rope. All right, well, go on, girl. You run ahead. I'll follow in the Jeep. <laughs> all right, you can drive, but come on, just go. Strange life David Jansen had. Remember him who started the old show, The Fugitive? He was a guy that supposedly had killed his wife, yet every time he came to a new town, people thought he was a great guy. Who's there? Uh, my name is Richard Kimball. They say I killed my wife, but I really didn't. Uh, can I come in and mow your lawn? Sure, come on in. Want to meet my wife? Yeah. Uh... One bad thing about television, I think, if a show becomes too popular, we're bombarded by products in the stores. And it's usually a hip show like Miami Vice. If you ever go to the store, you see Miami Vice posters, Miami Vice t-shirts, posters, t-shirts, bedspreads, nightlights, mugs. You never see things like 60 Minutes lunchboxes, <laughs> Mike Wallace and the Thermos, <laughs> Masterpiece Theater binders. <laughs> Take a sixth grader goes to school, I got my bath, all right. <laughs> and of all the reruns on TV, I think MASH is the leader so far. I, that is on all the time. I think they should have a 24-hour MASH channel. Why not? I, I watched the news last week. They break in with the MASH episode. I saw my dad do a strange thing at, uh, at home the other day, and maybe, maybe some of you guys have done this. Maybe you can relate to this. Can I ever do this at home? You're watching TV, and you see like a, one of those TNA shows on television. You can see like a really good-looking gal on TV, and she's got like a low-cut blouse on and you get real excited, you can see some cleavage, and you get really, really, you know, really excited, but you can't quite see enough, so you kind of walk up to that TV set, look down, try and get a better angle. <laughs> you know, it really scares you when you're watching Judy Jetson and do that. That really will, uh, <laughs> that'll get to you every time. This is Donna Stone. She lives in a house so clean you could eat off the floor. Of course, she doesn't. The Donna Reed Show on Nick at Night. And hope to God, there's a Clint Eastwood Western on. The best movies ever because they had, old, they had American voices dubbed in to the American actors. I was waiting for that scene where some cowboy would get up his horse and go, Hey! Hey! Yeah, you. You're dead. seen three of these in the theater. I couldn't help going to the corner after the show. Hey, cut seats. <laughs> What's weird, this guy drives up and goes, yeah, or two. <laughs> and if you've been to the mayor's city, <laughs> Carmel, he has a restaurant called Hog's Breath. And what's funny is they have cute names for the food based on his movie. Like there's the Dirty Harry Burger. <laughs> on the menu, who is going to order the Dirty Harry Burger? <laughs> I saw a Wendy's up the street. I'm going there. Oh. oh. Next time you go have fun, I start making up my own name. The waitress came over. There were three of them. The good, the bad, and the waitress I had. I said, okay, I'll have a uh, fistful of fries. <laughs> Sudden eggplant. For a few dollars more, I'll have uh, the Iger sandwich and make my chili every which way but loose. <laughs> she says, okay. Yeah. Funny girl, with that itch, could mean dandruff. <laughs> There's a television commercial for you, huh? <laughs> I never understood this. The woman looks over, great looking guy. Pierre Cardin suit, Rolex watch, $8,000 cash in his hand, getting in a Jaguar, looks just like Tom Selleck. Oh, but that itch. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this woman? I don't care if he's a leper. I'm going after him, you know? I just... <laughs> The old dating game, it was always a woman picking three guys. And did she always pick the ugliest guy? It was uncanny. If you were going to go on the dating game, pick some guy to go on a big date with, wouldn't you bring your best friend down to sit in the front row of the audience? Number two! Number two! two! You know that wasn't happening, though, because Goomba always came around the wall for the big date of the day. I'm watching once this woman's picking the three guys, asking the really stupid questions they write before the show. If I were a Twinkie, what would you fill me with? No, no. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Now, bachelors number one and number two were normal human beings. <laughs> number three was a goon. He was a loser. Out comes Jim Lang, the MC, to introduce the bachelors. She didn't pick. You didn't pick bachelor number one. Bachelor number one's a ski instructor. He likes to surf and give rub downs. Meet Robert. Robert gets up, walks around the little wall, and as soon as he gets around the wall, big zoom in on her face. <gasps> Paisley miniskirt, white vinyl boots up to here, the beehive, we all remember her. <laughs> Kisses her on the cheek, stands next to her. You also didn't pick bachelor number two. Bachelor number two is a doctor and a lawyer. <laughs> Says he likes to French kiss women for hours on end. Say hello to Jerome. <laughs> Jerome gets up, this guy's blonde, French. <laughs> He walks around the wall, big zoom in. <gasps> oh, she's in seventh heaven. Now let's meet the bachelor you did pick. But da da ba ba da ba 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 da ba. But a bachelor number three works at Taco Bell. <laughs> in his spare time, he likes to read comic books and squeeze pimples. Say hello <laughs> to Willard. Willard gets up, starts walking the wrong way. First of all. <laughs> Big zoom in on her face. <laughs> Trying to get number two to call her after the show. <laughs> and then that show was always followed by the newlywed game. After that, divorce court. <laughs> you watch a lot of sporting events on the tube? You ever see a lot of corporate ads during sporting events? You know, for things that no one really cares too much about. You wear steel. You are involved. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who's sitting there going, you S.D. and we're involved? Hey, that's right. I did want to buy my wife an anvil for Christmas. Some yeah. <laughs> people have no imagination. I saw an ad for mayonnaise one time. and said, hey, here's a handy tip for best foods. Next time you're making your next potato salad, why not add some ham to it? Or maybe some eggs. Yep. <laughs> that's like saying, hey, have that next piece of morning toast? Why not add a little butter to it, huh? Having popcorn? Salt's the word for me. <laughs> Disclaimers are big now. You see this now for ads like a preparation H. Use only as directed. <laughs> Gee, I'm out of toothpaste. I wonder if, uh... My favorite movies on television also are any Elvis Presley film, just to see what occupation he was going to be. Because no matter what he did, they always find an excuse for him to start singing. <laughs> Once he was a farmer plowing the fields, right? Hey, Lucky, the cattle stampeding. What do we do? Well, here your little cattle going with you. Just have a battle with me. Yeah. Say right here, there, cattle. You better head south, or you're going to get yourself a cake. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. And the cattle's behind him going, ah, ah, ah. Everybody sing. Elvis has been dead a long time. The National Enquirer doesn't leave him alone. You still see headlines. Elvis's ghost is haunting Graceland. Right, what's he doing now? What, hanging around the hallways and going, boo. <laughs> Scared him, thank you very much. I feel sorry for him. The National Enquirer doesn't leave Elvis alone. You still see those headlines, right? Elvis's ghost haunting Graceland. Then you read the story and it, they try to convince you that it's true. Servants who work there say unseen hands are moving things around. I think the unseen hands are opening the liquor cabinet over there. I saw Elvis in the den. I did. All these things they had on TV. I, the show, this is now canceled. I don't know what, I, I think I know what. Marlon Perkins was on the air for 21 years. Marlon Perkins claiming to get into the minds of these little animals tells us what they're thinking and why they do things. And we believed him. <laughs> All the shows now, I don't know how, you'd see a film clip of a little bird running along a beach and you hear, the yellow-bellied booby bird will sometimes lift its left leg in order to attract a mate of the opposite sex. How does he know this? Maybe the bird was backing up, there was some twigs, some rocks, he was going to trip, he lifted its left leg. Marlon, we can use that footage. <laughs> Anything to get, because he was running out of animals, you know, he was on the air for 21 years. I was waiting to see a goldfish on there. <laughs> you see a goldfish swimming around. The average goldfish will swim as many as 32,000 small circles in an average day in an average goldfish bowl. 
With not much else to do, the female goldfish will usually fantasize up to three hours at a time. The most common fantasy, studies show, is one in which she pretends to be a construction worker wearing a hard hat riding a wild stallion through the middle of a cornfield late at night. The horse rears off throwing her over a stalk of ripening corn. She is not hurt because of wearing the hard hat. She then continues to eat the corn. This is why we see them opening and closing their mouths continuously. You're through. 11 Sundays at 6 on Nick at Night. I hate that game also, you know why? Because you play too long, and all these facts that are stuck in your head, that after you finish, if somebody asks you a simple question, you still think you're playing? <laughs> hey, who ate that tuna fish sandwich? <laughs> I know that. Wait a minute. Oh, man, it's on the Brady Bunch or something. Um, it's that same feeling you get when there's a song stuck in your head, you can't get rid of it. Ever find yourself walking around the house for no reason going, you look better in a sweater washed in wool light. <laughs> the worst song ever stuck in my head was one called The Name Game, 1963. My Wakes Music Radio wakes me up at 6.30 in the morning with Arnold, Arnold, Bo Barnold, Banana, Fana, Bo Barnold, B5, Mo Marnold. Yeah, the first two letters are ever the same. You drop them both and say the name like Bob. Bob, drop the B, O, O, or Fred. I wanted this out of my head. <laughs> That's the worst song, because after three hours, you think it's gone. Then you go to the store. Thanks, thanks, bull banks, banana, fana, bull banks. <laughs> Ever sing to the car radio, and you really get into it. But then the car goes through a tunnel. How many still sing the song? So when you get through the tunnel, you match the words. Woo! I tried doing that with the news. That's tough. That's wrong, right? I worry that my niece gets too much of her education from television. I try to help myself. I like to read her stories from the Bible and then change the ending. <laughs> I sit her down. And Noah looks to the heavens and said, God, when you told me it would rain and the lands would flood, I believed. And I built this mighty ark so that we might be saved. But I pray to you now, tell me, how much longer will these rains continue? And God said, Well, Noah, let's go to the satellite map. <laughs> we can see a high pressure front moving over Mesopotamia. That'll meet with a warm front over the Dead Sea. Hello, Babylon! You know, kids, are watching way too much TV. I have a little God child now. He's adorable. He's two years old. He can't really talk yet. He calls me God. I like that. So he's, he's sitting at home and he's watching these game shows over and over again. I feel like, you know, by the time he's into grade school, he's expecting to win a prize for a correct answer. And I thought, you know, it wouldn't be that bad if school were run like a game show. You'd see the teacher walk out in front of the class. Okay, class, who can tell me what year Christopher Columbus discovered America? Uh, Sandy. 1573. I'm sorry, Sandy, that's incorrect. Danny, uh, 1492. That's absolutely correct, Danny. And for that correct answer, Johnny, tell him what he's won. He's just won an all-expense paid trip to the cafeteria for lunch today. That's right, Danny. You and a friend of your choice will be whisked away a full five minutes before the lunch bell rings and given that prestigious first position in line. That means the coldest milk, white or chocolate, the hottest food, and dessert, too. Don't worry, you'll get as much as you want. And there's more, Danny. You'll have two bullies suspended for three days each or one bully of your choice expelled for the entire year. And that's not all, Danny. You'll be driven home in our brand new school bus sitting in the seat of your choice. And it's not just any school bus, Danny. It's a brand new GMC Deluxe school bus with another high speed. All that's for you, Danny, from Banner Grade School. Back to you, Miss Willow. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> My favorite thing on TV, of course, is bowling. Uh, wrestling, sure, yeah. Great sport. I watch bowling. Anybody watch bowling on TV? How many bowl here, actually? I go bowling once every five years just to make sure I still hate it, you know? Remember, it used to be like 25 cents, 50 cents rent shoes. That was like a buck to rent shoes. But even that's not so bad. But you pay the guy the buck, he gives you the shoes, and he says, all right, now give me your shoes. Excuse me? Oh, yeah, right. $90 pair of fry boots. Yeah, you keep them. I want to steal these good-looking green, yellow, and orange bowling shoes. Yeah, lock the doors. These are beauties. Yeah. 
especially when you're 12 in the back. You don't look stolen that way, you know. I don't know about you, I can't get through a winter afternoon without watching some of that good PBA action on the tube. How about you? What was it last week, the Roll Aids Open? I don't know. Uh, and number 14, please. 14. Not a match. The board goes back. <laughs> soccer. You like to watch soccer on public TV? Ooh, boy. What is the game? About two, three hours? It's always tied 0-0. Zero, zero. Hey, I could watch all day. They've got one camera angle which comes from the ionosphere somewhere. Ants on the screen. Somebody got a ball out there? The Southampton team not really hustling for the ball anymore, not grouping too well, not passing. But it doesn't really matter. It's all academic now. Seconds remaining in the game. Wait, the West German team calling for the handball. Cool. And they're going to get it. But it doesn't really matter anymore. It's all academic now. Seconds remaining in the game. The fans are a bit upset. The players gouging out their own eyes. And who can really blame them? It doesn't really matter anymore. It's all academic now. The fans starting a small bonfire in the stadium. And who can really blame them? <laughs> Join us next week. We'll have exciting soccer made in Germany. Action will have East Hampton and North Germany. They don't have a country, but they do have a team. Join us. God willing, someone will score a goal. Who knows? I am Toby Charles. My wife is frigid. Are we still on the air? <laughs> See, I grew up in the language of television, of Leave it to Beaver and Dennis the Menace. I find out after watching my nephew, the language hasn't changed. Remember running to school with a group of friends, you say something like, Hey, last one there is a rotten egg. Then you hear, first one takes the last one's place. The one kid always says, not included. <laughs> I still like to talk this way, but it's very hard to use these phrases in adult situations. I've yet to find the opportunity where I can say, milk, milk, lemonade, around the corner, fudge is made. Uh, I see London, I see France, I see Cindy's underpants, all right. I tried these once at a job interview. This guy takes my resume, Mark Pitta. That's my name, don't wear it out. <laughs> You're unemployed now, is that right? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I didn't get the job, and uh, he told me I was childish, so I had to use it. Mister, I don't want your stupid job anyway. So what a burn, what a cut, stick your finger up your butt. <laughs> Apparently, he knew the language. He said, I'm rubber, your glue, everything. You say, bounce off me, sticks to you. That went on for an hour, and then I gave him cooties. <laughs> he didn't have CP. Cootie protection. My sister was great in an argument. My sister was like Patty Duke. She would, I would argue with her. She would use one word. I couldn't deal with it. I come home from school. Kenny. <laughs> you went in the kitchen, <laughs> and you ate the last piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> And you know, Mom said it was my piece, and you ate it! So, <laughs> accompanying with the sister face, Mom would tell Mom when she gets home, and you're gonna get in trouble. So, and when my mom came home, I couldn't explain it because I was crying the same time I was trying to talk. That was impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kathy ate <laughs> the last piece of cake not one you said I could have uh, 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 uh. my mom said so thank you very much you guys have been great stick around